a stunning achievement in speculative fiction. The Voyage to Arcturus has inspired, enchanted, and unsettled readers for decades. It is simultaneously an epic quest across one of the most unusual and brilliantly depicted alien worlds ever conceived, a profoundly moving journey of discovery into the metaphysical heart of the universe, and a shockingly intimate excursion into what makes us human and unique. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of David Lindsay's A Voyage to Arcturus. A Voyage to Arcturus is a 1920 novel um, and a very different one. A lot of people have called it um, a poorly written one, one does, that does not focus on character overly much, um, I guess as far as uh, the hero's journey, uh, that might be true, but it does deal a lot with, um, well, uh, big questions and big ideas, right? Like, what is the point of life? Uh, is there a god? Um, does he care if there is a god? Um, who are we? Um, this is a philosophical response in some ways to World War I. Uh, some people have described it as Gnostic. Um, overall, <laughs> it is very interesting. It's almost... Um, even I even saw one reviewer, and I agree with this, a Pilgrim's Progress on Acid. Um, it is, in some ways, science fiction um, because it takes place, uh, our character Maskell, um, he goes to, well, a planet that is orbiting, well, that is in, orbiting around Arcturus, though I believe it's a binary system in this world, uh, which is not real life. Um, and uh, that's basically where the science fiction ends because it becomes really trippy uh, i don't i don't use that word lightly um it really does right this move this book starts with a seance um and an alien apparition appears during the seance um <laughs> uh, but apparently people in scotland figured out how to do space travel so um the planet is torments if i'm remembering correctly um but it also deals with um things besides you know earlier said it's it deals with things like sex uh, right, because we don't have the male and female we generally think of on Earth as well. Um, so, uh, and what those mean as these gender roles are, may, are are definitely played with, right? They're explored. Uh, there's even a third sex that gets its own gender-neutral pronoun, unless I completely misread it, which is possible, because it's just written in such a weird way. Um, its strangeness is really what makes it stand out, um, and in some ways, it really reminded me of Paralandra by C.S. Lewis because of that. Um, I hear um, it was probably an inspiration for um, Pullman's His Dark Materials, um, as far as like the big questions go. Um, I haven't read that yet, sadly. But it does take some names from Germanic myth, which is pretty cool. Um, it seems to deal with some things like con conformity uh, and just being conscious. Like there's like all consciousness is pain type of thing. Um, and like... Do we even put good into the world? Are we guilty of violence by what we do? Um, it's There's a lot to dive into here, and I think I will definitely have to um, read more of this at some point, as this was, again, influential on more people, even like Tolkien, uh, Clive Barker, and even Michael Moorcock. Uh, so this is a quite a big read. That is actually quite a small book, um, and uh, a little bit of a hidden gem. Um, but if you like old school sci-fi, uh, philosophical readings, maybe even old school fantasy in a sense, uh, especially stuff that gets quite fantastical, um, read this. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, <laughs> hopefully some of these few words I, I shared with you helped you with your expectations on it, but, uh, I actually quite enjoy this. I, I am looking forward to reading this one again at some point because I think I could get something else from this. Um, but, um, as of right now, this was my buddy read, uh, for November, and so I thought I'd come out with a review just saying my initial thoughts, and maybe someday when I reread it, I'll have more in-depth thoughts. Anyways, leave a leave, I'll see you. I'll catch you next time.